service incentive leave. Service incentive leave is akin to vacation leave. It is intended not merely to give additional salary or bounty, but to give the employees a chance to get a much-needed rest in order to replenish their worn-out energies and acquire a new vitality to enable them to efficiently perform their duties. Service incentive leave is five days with pay per year. Note the conditions for entitlement. To be entitled to service incentive leave, the covered employee must have rendered at least one year of service, whether continuous or broken. If unused, service incentive leave is commutable to cash. The employee may choose to either use the service incentive leave or commute it to its monetary equivalent. If the covered employee does not use or commute his service incentive leave, it will accumulate and the employee will be entitled to all his accumulated service incentive leaves upon his resignation or separation from work. Claims for service incentive leave prescribe after three years. Considering that service incentive leave is cumulative, the three-year prescriptive period should be reckoned from the time the employer refuses to pay its monetary equivalent or from termination of employment. Burden of proof in a complaint for a non-payment of service incentive leave. The burden lies upon the employer to prove payment rather than on the employee to prove non-payment, considering that the pertinent personal files, payrolls, records, and other similar documents are not in the possession of the worker but are in the custody and control of the employer. Maternity leave for employees in the private sector. This is a benefit granted by the expanded maternity leave law to female workers, married or unmarried, regardless of employment status, to give birth, suffer miscarriage, or emergency termination of pregnancy. Emergency termination of pregnancy refers to stillbirth or pregnancy loss on or after the 20th week of gestation. Note the duration of maternity leave. 1. For pregnancy or childbirth, it's 105 days for ordinary employees, 120 days, that is 105 days plus 15 days for solo parents. Number 2. For miscarriage or emergency termination of pregnancy, it's 60 days. There's no limit as to the number of times a female employee can go on maternity leave. Maternity leave should be enjoyed in a continuous or uninterrupted manner. It cannot be deferred. It may be availed of before or prenatal or after the actual period of delivery, postnatal. But the postnatal leave shall not be less than 60 days. In case of live childbirth, the maternity leave may be extended for 30 days without pay at the option of the employees, in which case the employees must notify their employer in writing at least 45 days before the end of the maternity leave. The 45-day notice is not necessary if the extension was brought about by medical emergency but the employees must give subsequent notice. A part of the maternity leave credits may be assigned. Seven days of the maternity leave benefit may be allocated or assigned to 1. The child's father if they share the same household regardless of whether the father is married to the female worker or 2. An alternate caregiver in case of death, absence, or incapacity of the father. The caregiver may be a relative within the fourth degree of consanguinity or the current partner of the female worker who shares the same household. Note the effect of death or permanent incapacity. If the employee dies or becomes permanently incapacitated, the balance of the maternity leave shall accrue to the father of the child who shares the same household or to a qualified caregiver. Components of the maternity leave pay the maternity leave pay for private sector employees is composed of 1. The SSS maternity benefit, which is based on the average daily salary credit to be paid in advance by the employer subject to reimbursement by the SSS. And number 2. Salary differential, that is, the difference between the cash benefit from the SSS and the regular wages of the employee to be paid by the employer. Note the effect of termination of employment without the employee's fault. If childbirth, miscarriage, or emergency termination of pregnancy takes place within 15 calendar days from termination of employment, such as voluntary resignation, retrenchment, redundancy, or illness, the maternity leave benefit shall still be granted because the right thereto has already accrued. This means that the employer will still advance the SSS maternity benefit and if not exempted, will still have to pay the salary differential. If childbirth, miscarriage, or emergency termination of pregnancy took place after 15 calendar days from termination of employment, the employee will be entitled only to the SSS maternity benefit. The employer is not obliged to pay the salary differential. 
Note the effect of dismissal on the right to maternity leave pay. If there was illegal dismissal, the employer shall pay the employee the full maternity benefit, 105 days for childbirth or 60 days for miscarriage or emergency termination of pregnancy. The employee will further be entitled to the SSS maternity benefit. If there's a valid dismissal, the employee will be entitled only to the SSS maternity benefit. The employer is not obliged to pay the salary differential. Disputes regarding the grant of maternity leave benefit shall be filed with the Social Security Commission. Claims for non-payment of salary differential shall be filed with the Dole Field Provincial or Regional Office having jurisdiction over the workplace. Paternity leave. This is a benefit granted by the Paternity Leave Act to a male employee regardless of employment status, the purpose of which is to allow him to lend support to his wife while recovering from the effects of childbirth or miscarriage. Who are entitled to paternity leave. All married male employees, regardless of employment status, are entitled to paternity leave. Paternity leave is available on occasion of his wife's childbirth or miscarriage. The duration of paternity leave is seven days with full pay, including allowances and other monetary benefits. Note the conditions for entitlement. The woman who gave birth or suffered miscarriage must be the legitimate wife. At the time of the miscarriage or delivery of the child, the male spouse must be an employee and cohabiting with his lawful wife. The employee must apply for paternity leave with his employer stating the expected date of delivery. Paternity leave can be availed of only for the first four childbirths or miscarriages of the legitimate wife. The paternity leave may be enjoyed before, during, or after the delivery by his wife but not later than 60 days after the date of said delivery. If this benefit is unused, it is not convertible to cash. Bousy leave or battered woman leave. This is a benefit granted by the Anti-Violence Against Women and Their Children Act to women who personally or her child, whether legitimate or illegitimate, suffered from or has been threatened with physical, sexual, psychological, or economic abuse by her husband, former husband, or by a person with whom she has or had a sexual or dating relationship, or by a person with whom she has a common child. The vowsy leave is 10 days, extendable when the necessity arises as specified in a protection order. The 10-day vowsy leave can be availed of only for the days when the woman employee has to attend to medical and legal concerns. The only requirement for entitlement is a certification from the Punong Barangay, Kagawad, Prosecutor, or the Clerk of Court where the case for violence against women and their children is pending. If this benefit is not used, then it is not convertible to cash. Parental leave or solo parent leave is a benefit granted by the Solo Parents Welfare Act to single parents, male or female, who are left alone with the responsibility of parenthood to enable them to perform parental duties and responsibilities to their children or dependents. Children or dependents refer to those living with and dependent upon the solo parent for support who are unmarried, unemployed, 22 years old and below, or over 22 years old but with physical or mental disability. Note the categories of solo parent. Number one, a parent who provides sole parental care and support of the child or children due to birth as a consequence of rape even without final conviction, death of the spouse, detention or service of sentence of spouse for at least three months, physical or mental incapacity of the spouse as certified by a public or private medical practitioner, Declaration of nullity, annulment of marriage or divorce as decreed by a court recognized by law, abandonment by the spouse for at least six months, or legal separation or de facto separation for at least six months. Number two, the spouse, family member, or guardian of the child or children of an overseas Filipino worker if the overseas Filipino worker belongs to the low or semi-skilled worker category and is away from the Philippines for an uninterrupted period of 12 months. Number three, unmarried mother or father who keeps and rears the child or children. Number four, legal guardian, adoptive or foster parent who solely provides parental care and support to a child or children. Number five, the relative within the fourth civil degree of consanguinity or affinity of the parent or legal guardian who assumes the parental care and support of the child or children as a result of death, abandonment, disappearance, or absence of the parents for at least six months. Number six, pregnant women who provide sole parental care and support to their unborn child or children. Note the conditions for entitlement to parental leave. Number one, at least six months of service. 
Number two, notice of availment to the employer within a reasonable time period. And three, presentation of the solo parent identification card. The duration of the parental leave for solo parents is seven working days every year. The parental leave benefit is available as long as the employee remains to be a solo parent. If the employee ceases to be a solo parent, the right to parental leave will terminate. Special leave for women employees. This is a benefit granted by the Magna Carta of Women to female employees who undergo surgery because of gynecological disorders. Gynecological disorders refer to maladies involving the female reproductive organs, specifically the vagina, cervix, uterus, fallopian tubes, ovaries, breast, adnexa, or pelvic floor that would require surgical procedures such as dilatation and curatage, hysterectomy, ovarectomy, and mastectomy. The duration of special leave for women is two months with full pay based on gross monthly compensation. For purposes of determining the period of special leave that will be allowed to a woman employee, the certification of a competent physician shall control. A woman employee can avail of the special leave for every instance of gynecological surgery for a maximum total period of two months per year. If unused, the special leave benefit for women is not cumulative and not convertible to cash. To be entitled to the special leave, the female employee must have undergone surgery due to gynecological disorder, rendered at least six months continuous aggregate employment service for the last 12 months prior to surgery, and just filed an application for special leave with the employer within a reasonable time expected date of surgery or within such period as may be provided under company policies or collective bargaining agreement. If the woman employee had undergone gynecological surgery during her maternity leave, she is entitled only to the difference between the special leave benefit and the maternity leave benefit.